Well, we're back at Adam's Head, and uh, which sounds kind of funny, but we are, and I have to have this done by Wednesday. Well, Adam would like to pick up Wednesday or Thursday at the most because he's got plans to wear this uh, at, a com at a con. So uh, I got a lot to do. I got to attach the skin. Uh, I got to hook up the mechanics. Uh, I got to do the hair work now. The hair is being sent to inbound right now from Adam. Uh, so what I'm going to start with is changing how I did the mechanics on mine. Now I used this goldenrod here, which you can get. Uh, it's for model airplanes. It's for controlling ailerons, rudder, throttle, all kinds of stuff when you need to get into hard to get places to make controls work on a radio controlled airplane. Now it comes with brass and I used the brass cable, which is a little on the stiff side and I thought it'd be good for pushing the lips back as well as opening them, but the way it actually worked out is it was more difficult to open the mouth uh, using the cables. I started uh, realizing that what had probably been done was that they were using a very soft cord like this fishing line here, which is pretty strong stuff. It's, uh, I think it'll survive anybody's use, 65 pound test. So I've used this stuff before. It travels very easily through this and it doesn't matter how tight of a bend I make, it still travels very easily. So there's not going to be as much torque necessary to apply to make to this to get the, the tabs to move. So the first thing I'm going to do is go in here and make marks where I'm going to have my controls and drill holes and hot glue in the cable. So I'm going to start here. Yeah, it's going the wrong way. Okay, so that's one. And I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to feed this in. like so and then using a hot glue gun just kind of suck it in like so of course now I have to wait for it to cool down enough before I can do the next part so I'll go ahead and put another one piece of this. Now the reason I go at an angle like that is so we get this tapered slot so that the the actual housing is facing down over the lips instead of coming straight out and having to make a bend, uh, which is not good. Now I just put a little bit of hot glue on there and then suck it into the hole. I mean we have to wait. Now this one should be cool enough now that I can bend it around, which it seems I can. Um, I'm going to come on the inside here, and I have way too much housing. Um, I'm going to bring it right to there, so I'm going to cut this. And hot glue that. Okay, so I got two of the housings in, and I'm going to do the same thing for the bottom. But I'm, this will give you an idea how this works. So um, I'm going to turn this back around this way, and I'm going to feed some of this cable through. Now 
one of the reasons I do prefer the wire, but it's like once you get this going, this just has to be what they did. Um, I'm going to feed it through down here, turn this over, and I'm going to um, drill a hole down here. And the reason I bring it so close to the opening of the mouth, because the further back you go, the less leverage you have. So it's all about the leverage. So I'm going to just going to make a case okay, right, right there. Should always make a pilot hole first, but I didn't. So I'm going to feed this through to two holes. And I'm going to tie it off and put some glue over it. Hmm. It's resisting me because of the fibers. And run it through this way. Tie this off. Tie it off again, and then I'm going to put some glue on it, some hot glue, because then it won't uh, try to unravel at a, at a later date, which it will do if it can. This stuff's very hard to cut, so I'm using an exacto blade. It will not cut with scissors. It's 65 pound test, so um, a little bit of hot glue on there. Eventually, this is all going to get covered over with with um, sticky felt, sticky back felt. So now, let's uh, cut off a little bit of this. Always better to have too much than not enough. And what I'm going to do is going to come back here. I'm going to attach a plate to this made out of styrene, and you're going to see how the whole thing floats. Okay, so this is what I'm doing. Uh, I'm going to tie off these little tabs like this. I'm probably going to put a drop of CA on them instead of hot glue for this application. Okay, got there's one. Right there, I run the other one through, and uh, these fibers are resisting me, so I need to go down here, grab this, open it up a little wider. Still some stuff in there. sure I don't cross any of this because I've done it and then you tie a knot and you go how come I can't oh I want that mouth closed I'm going to put that underneath there like that. I want these to be somewhat level and we're going to tie that one off I have lots of extra here Nice. Perfect. Now these little tabs get glued to the lips and of course uh, when the mouth opens these go up. Okay so here I've got this little tab uh, that's that fits down and this will go right the lips come to about here so this will be lips will be a little over this piece and so when Adam's inside or when I wear mine when you go like this, it, it pulls the lips up like that. And when it goes back down, just the weight of the silicone will pull it back down again. So here you see the skin. And so when the tabs under here, my, my, my hope is, is that it naturally wants to come back to that position. And plus, I'm going to move the nose down a little bit so it's and the bottom lip up a little bit so it's like naturally pressing that closed position so whenever it gets pulled down it's going to go back the weight should pull it back up that's the theory we'll test it here in a minute so now <laughs> i've been working on this for a while and it turned out that the uh, fish line really isn't going to work well with this particular application without return springs and a bunch of complicated stuff it's not going to work because the silicone is so 
pliable that it kind of wants to stay where you put it. So these will push it back and I'll show you. So what I did was put back in the golden rod, uh, which is actually brass thin cable, uh, back into the same housings I showed you I was starting to work on. This is uh, cotton material that's soaked with CA. It's got a nice rough consistency to it so it, it likes to grab, the silicone likes to grab to it as much as my gloves did. Um, and this will be silicone, silicone on this and silicone to the skin um, so that when Adam opens his mouth up like this, the further he opens it, the more the lip goes up. Now, if he went up this high, that's not really how high it will go, but he will have some resistance, so he will be able to lay, raise the mouth open about that far, which is really good. The lip will, edge will be right there. As you can see, the lower lips are also retracted, and so when it comes forward, because uh, the silicone will hold it, to, the weight of it will hold it like this, but you can see where this lower lip is, and if you watch it, you can see it retracts much further than they even did in the actual movie. So this is very smooth, very easy to operate. I learned a lot from the first one I made for myself. I learned I needed to make the skin much more flexible, softer, more deadener, and also learned more about how this works better. So that's finished, that part of the mechanics. So now it's time to attach the skin. That's what I'm going to do next is put this very, very pliable, squishy, skin <laughs> on this uh, and and you see all these holes here this is uh, again this is so that the silicone can go uh, inside through the fiberglass and the inside and it'll act like a rivet so it won't come loose so easily so we're going to be doing that next uh, and then we can test the lip mechanism and I know it's going to work because mine works and I have pretty stiff silicone on mine this thing's really going to fly <laughs> That paint can be the door, it's just blinding me, so I put my hand over my head here. This is uh, silicone paint, which is basically thinned down silicone. With Dow Corning silicone paint thinner. Not a darker color. Kind of give it some modeling. And I think that does it for about this because the rest there's gonna be hair, and I don't really worry about it being painted there. I just need it there. And of course, this has to be powdered down afterwards to kill the shine. It'll still shine a bit, but uh, it's it's looking pretty good. I'm just doing some freckling here, which you probably won't even see, but. You can see how thin this paint is. That's silicone. But that's really coming out nice. So now these are the ears I just made uh, from the molds. And I'm loosening them up really good before I try to get them out of there. And there we got a really nice ear. Adam's head mask. His head already has two nice ears on it. Uh, okay. And so we got two really nice ears. Two for two. They're nice and uh, squishy and very much like a real ear. Now you need to take the uh, alcohol to that, clean off the Vaseline, the mold release, and paint them.
Okay, so we are doing many, many, many things right now. I'm trying to get this done for Adam because he's, uh, he's going to take it out to the, to the uh, uh, convention. Uh, and so just in today, I've managed to get the tongue in there, the ears on, uh, the skin painted. Uh, the lip mechanism is even better because I improved on it. So that's really good. And he asked, asked, he, Adam sent me uh, this hair here. Uh, which I've used before. I never heard it called this before. I should have read <laughs> what it said here. This stuff is reasonably inexpensive. It's for hair extensions. Uh, and you can get it at uh, beauty supply stores. That's where I first found it. And I was like, my God, this stuff's so cheap. And it's kind of like yak hair. So what I'm using is, these. this is another kind of synthetic hair, very similar to this, which gives it some salt and pepper. Then I'm using the black and I know on camera you can't tell but under bright light this is black this is brown and I've mixed together this very dangerous device here called the hackle and so what that's given me and I'm going to run it through the hackle what this does I keep doing this over and over again and it you know it combs through the hair and gives you this wonderful mix so I'm going to uh, cut the hair like this the nice thing is, you see, we got this real blunt edge like this. I'll be able to run it through again. But for this, I'm going to spread this out and I'm going to lay it onto this black felt um, and do that and bring it, do one layer like this, another layer, another layer, another layer. So uh, without further ado, uh, I'll try a little bit. It's still a bit on the long side, so I'm going to cut this just a little bit shorter which uh, is a shame, but here we are. This could be saved for other things. Uh, okay, so I want to spread this out a bit, like so. And I'm going to take some barge cement here. And with any luck, with a strong wind, I will get the hair on here. Oh, messy, messy. So we are in a hurry. I always pretend I'm on a film shoot. It's got to shoot tomorrow. Works out pretty well. Bring it all the way around like this. And then if it's too long, that's good. I'd rather have it that way. Okay, so I've got that on there. And it's way too long, so now I can see that I can actually start tugging some of it up like so and there is no way to do hair work cleanly some, some of you may disagree but you're also probably infinitely more patient than I am so I'm going to cut some more off here and do the same thing that is a problem <laughs> with your hands getting sticky Right over here. Basically, you get it started, you just start laying more and more over it, and after a while, you've got a wig or hair in this guy's case. And it really likes to stick to this barge cement. Rather well. And to your fingers. And to your nose. So that's uh, that's a good start. Now I'm going to do this several more times till this gets really full. Uh, and when I get to this point, then I'm going to be using silicone because you can't stick barred cement to a silicone skin. So you have to use silicone and stick it to silicone. But we'll come back after I've gotten further along. So we're doing happy hair punching here using the hair punch which is a needle uh, it's a, a threading needle with the eye cut off on one side leaving a point sticking out and a hook on the other side and it grabs the hair as you can see and it goes right into the silicone and I've been punching most of this hair all morning 
uh, sometimes you get too much so you just pull out some although if you're gonna go over it it doesn't matter with finer punching uh, just light like that you start feathering it out as you get to the top here a little too much there um, she's she's got it right up and I say she because it was I was a, it was the the girl sculptor on the show that did this stuff. Just doing the last bit here, up around the chin. This is crepe wool, and I'm just allowing a little bit to be in there, just tiny bits, to try to replicate this here. And that is lunchtime. Okay. Uh, just a little more hair work and we're done with the hair work because I have to, to style it and uh, use the clippers on it like so and shave things down but before that I just want to put a little more of this right up under the chin the way she had it you can see how it just this goes through pokes it in boom hair Sound effects are important. Bing. Zing. Song. There we go. Come on, a little more. It's pretty well in. I have to comb it out a bit. The little tiny bits here. But that's basically it on the hair work. Now, of course, all the rest of the hair work was, was glued down, as you saw me doing, and then the rest of it uh, that was done up here was glued down with silicone and then the rest of it punched. And what I mean by combing it is basically I'm going to go through and kind of thin it out a bit like this. Uh, and then I'm going to take actually some flat black paint and darken down the uh, areas that are darker. Uh, a little trick I learned from Rick Baker many, many moons ago on our gorilla suits. Uh, and of course he's very, very hairy right now, but you always start off with a lot of hair and then you trim it back because it's just much easier to do it that way and then give it a haircut. But that's looking really nice, really cool. It's time for lunch. So uh, that's basically how we do it. Then, then we have to go and start trimming off all the stuff that's too long and I like to use one of these because you can really feather it nice and if you're not good at cutting hair like me these things can make you look really good. And I'm just going to keep doing this and doing this till it's about the right length which is pretty short under here like so. You see how that does a pretty good job of cutting stuff shorter. too much there. Uh, then the other thing I'm going to do of course is take some flat black paint and darken down some of this and take down some of the salt and pepper. As you can see it's really starting to look pretty well groomed. I, the, the eyebrows are a bit bushy off the art. I just take those down a little bit like that. And we just keep doing that and doing that until uh, it looks right to my eye and we call it done. And that's how we do that. We're done with Adam's mask <laughs> and uh, uh, you saw I put the hair on. I started laying it from the back slowly but surely with the barge cement and after I got up this far then I put the rest of it on using silicone because as I said before silicone only sticks to silicone. You can't stick anything else to it except Baltis, but that's another story, I digress. Uh, so using the silicone, the same way I use the barred cement, uh, it sets up in about 15 minutes, the prosthetic silicone, I was able to lay down the hair all the way down to here. The rest of all this hair you see is done with the punching that you, that you saw. So this, this head is done, I've taken the shaver to it and I've, I've shaved it and got rid of a lot of the excess hair by pulling it out which thins it out, makes it look nicer. And in addition to that, uh, styled the beard. Now the beard's got um, a combination of, of flat black paint and 
uh, crystal clear Kylon, and this kind of sets it like hairspray so it doesn't go all over the place. Um, so that finishes this, this mask, and I mean, it really came together quite quickly. Uh, as you know, the, the mouth moves really well. When he, when he closes his mouth, it will do that. When he opens his mouth, it'll snarl like that. So it's, it's really, it's quite nice. I'm very, very pleased with this whole project. And we got it done just in time for uh, Adam to appear at New York Comic Con. By the time you watch this, you will have known that happened. Uh, so I'm not giving anything away, but but uh, he he was going to wear this at Comic Con uh, in a suit. <laughs> Until later on, we both get our full suits built. I'm going to do the hands, the feet, the chest, and neck uh, part of it next. Uh, Adam's going to ventilate his own suit. I'm going to ventilate my own suit. We'll have two suits. Who knows what will happen after that? But I, I really enjoy this project. It was a lot of fun doing this for Adam and I look forward to the next project. Thanks all of you for watching.